Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma dar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hayyakum Allah ya ahabbati fillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ilm al-nafi, rizq al-tayyib, wa amal al-muttaqabbilan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq, wa ikhlas, wa thabat ala sunnah al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In this time of great fitna, in this time of great disunity and, dis and discord, uh, often between Ahl sunnah and between Ahl sunnah and Ahl bid'ah. And may Allah bless the Muslims in general. Uh, continue on in our study. Uh, we were we covered the third principle and we're finishing up some last important points regarding the third principle that Sheikh Zaid Al Medhali Rahmatullahi Rahmatul Wasiya that he mentioned about the third point. And for the sake of uh, reminding myself and my brothers and sisters about the third point, Muhammad ibn Duhar Rahimullah Ta'ala said regarding the third principle he said from the completion of unity is listening and obeying the one who has been granted authority over us even if he is an Abyssinian slave and we talked about that extensively uh, and the explanations uh, a little bit from Imam uh, Fozan uh, and Sh Imam uh, Zaid and others bringing about some of the fuayid and we mentioned some of the nasus, some of the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa ati Allah wa ati Rasul obey Allah and obey the messenger and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala linked obedience to him with obedience to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we mentioned some of the nasus from the ahadith of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that this is the madhab of the salaf uh, we didn't go into many athar of the salaf but there are so many if I were to spend time if I had time, then I would I would take time and we could really drive this point home. But those are that's almost a dars in and of itself. And in fact, it is. Uh, but we could go to countless books. I could go to, right over there, I could go to Usul uh, Al-Tiqad Li'al-Laqai. We could go to Sunan Khalal. We could go to, you know, countless books. And before those books of the Salaf, those narrations of the Salaf, we could go to countless ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you'll find in Kitab al-Imara in uh, Sahih Muslim and throughout the six sunnans. Uh, so there is so much nusus from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and according to the Faham of the Salaf of this Ummah and the Fuqaha, the later generations who came and codified this principle uh, about obeying the leaders. And one thing I want to uh, mention, and I haven't had any coffee, but since it's just come to mind, and and it is important to mention this, and it's not out of hassid or anything, but when I hear things when, like what I read from uh, Yasser Qadi, some of the statements he made showing, you know, and this is a man who has studied. He studied. Dr. Qadi has studied extensively. He studied, uh, you know, for years and years in Medina with various mashayikh, he studied in some of the most prestigious, you know, one of the most prestigious universities in the secular world. You know, the man has a uh, background and he's written and he's done what he's done, an accomplishment. But you can still see, even with uh, reaching a level of knowledge or acquiring knowledge, the nux, we all have shortcomings, we all have weaknesses, but sometimes the shubahat overtakes people and they go into bid'ah and they become from ahl bid'ah. You know, with fierceness. In fact, we can find that with Yasser Qadi, and that's another topic for another time, and it's outside of the scope of our dars. But I just had to mention that because he has some very strange statements. He says, well, in my opinion, he goes against the whole, it's like going against a mountain of the Salaf, a mountains of the Aqwal of the Salaf. In my view, I think the Salafis are a little too extreme on this hearing, you know, with the Muslim ruler. And he refers to the Salafis and Medikhalis. All of these statements of batil, which we will deal with, bi'idhnillah, when I get the time in the future, as I've already done some writing about this in the past, and I want to make sure everything is just when I uh, begin to speak about this important issue. So the point being, is there's so many people speaking about this and speaking about that. Do not get in confused. Because when you go back to those texts of the Salaf, we're just talking about the Medhah of the Salaf. We're not talking about the Khawarij. We're not talking about 
Tekfir uh, al We're not talking about Khwana Muslimin. We're not talking about other groups and sects. We're talking about the Madhab the Salam. This is what we adhere to because we believe that it is the truth, that it is the preservation of Islam, that these usul are what real Islam is. That's what Islam is. That's why we adhere to it. It's not about Hezbiyah. It's not about a group. It's not about a clique. It's not about following this or that or just because I like Sheikh Zaid's name or because of this or that. No. But it's about following the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf because that is the Sabila Mu'mineen, Sabila Najah. Let's get back to the text. So then, we mentioned countless uh, narrations. Let's go back before we get into this last little section about this third asl, min usul, this third principle from amongst the principles, I just wanted to read one little short passage from Imam Fuzan, and this is a book I hope we can go through in the future, uh, Ta'liqat uh, ta al-Mukhtasara ala metin aqidat al that Imam Fuzan has written a very short, simple shar. Simple uh, editorial with com a commentary of Aqidat Tahwiya. And I would love to use this book, and I will use it to teach with in the future because of its simplistic style. It doesn't require much translation thought. You can go right to the text, and it's just beautifully written for our level. May Allah bless us. Ameen. Listen to this what Imam Fozan says about what Imam Tahawi, this is what uh, uh, Imam Tahawi said. That, that's a qaida salafiyya, qaida usuliyya, qaida minhajiyya, qaida min ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. That's the aqidah of ahl sunnah. That is it right there. That is a principle. And I, we can go to so many books. I can go to the, so many books of the fuqaha. Why don't we just go to uh, 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 al mughni al mughni who's going to dispute with al mughni mughni by Imam uh, Ibn Qudama, which talks about, you know, those a'imma, they codified in fiqh, and they will, you'll see in so many of their books that they say the same thing in the books of Aqidah and some of the, in the books of fiqh, that this is not permissible to go against the imam. And that's not taking into mind all the shibahat that Ahl Takfir make about not ruling about uh, what Allah revealed and all these other things to try to take the Muslims uh, uh, out of the fold of Islam. So Imam Fuzan said about this beautiful statement, uh, Imam Tahawi said, and we do not see Khuruj revolting uh, against our leaders and those you know who are charged in authority over us. Imam Fuzan said, هَذِهِ مَسْأَلَ عَظِيمَ فَمِنْ أَصُولَ أَهْلُ سُنَّةِ وَالْجِمَعَةِ أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرَوْنَ خُرُوجَ عَلَى وَلَاتِ الْأَمْرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ He said, this is a, a major issue. And he said, it is from the usul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And he said that they do not, what is from the usul of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah? أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرَوْنَ خُرُوجَ عَلَى وَلَاتِ الْأَمْرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ That they do not see revolting against the leaders of the Muslim. And then he mentioned the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya yuladina amanu ati'ullaha wa ati'u rasoola wa ul al amrin minkum. O you who believe. So this is addressed to the believers, not uh, ahla uh, kufr wa zandaka. This is addressed to ahli iman. Ya yuladina amanu. O you who believe. Obey Allah and obey the messenger and those charged in authority over you. That's what Allah says. What, what can you say after that? وَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ يُتْعِ الْأَمِيرِ فَقَدْ أَطَعْنِي وَمَنْ يَعْسِ الْأَمِيرِ فَقَدْ أَصَعْنِي The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said in Bukhari and Muslim صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He said, whoever obeys the Amir, then he has obeyed me. And whoever disobeys the Amir, then he has disobeyed me. Your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu rabbi wa salamu alayhi said this. I didn't say it. It wasn't Wahhabism that said it. It wasn't uh, Neo-Salafis, as they claim, who said it. It wasn't this, it wasn't that. This is what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we gave you qala Allah, we gave you qala Rasul uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have the asl, we have the That asl, right there, that's what knowledge is. Qala Allah, qala Rasul, kama qala men, kama qala Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim. Ibn al-Qayyim, I believe it was Ibn al-Qayyim or it was uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. 
But it's wade jiddan. It's very clear that this is an asl. Just ibtaid. Stay away from those those issues. Those issues generally don't even concern us as lay persons, especially living in non-Muslim countries. But we always have something to say. We're always looking for the latest news to belittle the leader. And we don't say that the leaders don't make mistakes. We don't say that the leaders don't don't oppress. We don't say that the leaders don't commit sin openly. We're not saying that. And we don't protect them in their sins. And we don't protect them in, in their oppression. But we do not call for rebelling against them. And we do not spend time, our time, speaking against them and speaking about, uh, against them and protesting and, and all of these things which cause folda and fitna. Now listen to this hikmah from uh, Imam Fuzan and then from our Salaf. Then he said, Jews al No, it's not permissible to revolt. Wallahu kanu fasikin li annahum man aqida in aqidat bay'atuhum wa thabatat walayatuhum wa fil khuruj alayhim wallahu kana fasikin mufasid azima he said in in rebelling against them is a wicked evil even if that they are sinful even if they are uh uh even if they are sinful because we have taken an oath of allegiance to the leader. In the Muslim countries, they make bay'ah to their leaders, whether it's a, a president, a Muslim president, whether it's a Muslim king, whether it's a Muslim this, and all the various uh, government styles that have Muslim rulers, they take a, a bay'ah under their those things. But for us in the West, we don't have a Muslim ruler and we don't have a bay'ah. We are uh, not falling under that, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to follow his commands. Ameen, ya rabbil alameen. Then he said, so whoever divides the Muslims, you know, breaks this uh, pledge uh, and, 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 you know, goes against the, the, uh, those things which unite, meaning Tawheed, going against what unites the Muslims and makes it so there is no safety in the land. Why? How do they do that? By rebelling and revolting. Look at all these places. Let's just be honest. Look at Syria. Look at Yemen. Look at uh, Tunisia. All these places. Libya. None of them have recuperated. Yes, Ahl al-Kufra have their hand fully in it. Yes, but, the, but where did a lot of these things they began? They began with rebelling against wicked leaders and sometimes disbelieving leaders without the power to do so, without the the, the qawwa and the uh, preparation. And look at all the bloodshed that continues on. Syria is in its seventh year now. Wallah mistaan. And you open the door for takfiri shayateen like ISIS to enter. So it's going against what? It's going against this important asl that the Imam is mentioning. And this is asl from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And it allowed and opened the doors, Imam Fozan says, for the disbelievers to take uh, command in those lands. And then he ends with this statement, because we're not going to get into all the other things that he says about this. But he says, قَالَ الشَّيْخَ الْإِسْلَامِ رَحِمَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مَا خَرَجَ قُومُ على إمامهم إلا كانت حالتهم بعد الخروج أسوى من حالتهم قبل الخروج. شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية said this. How many hundreds of years ago? What did he say? He said there isn't, there hasn't been a people who revolted against their leader, except that their state status or their condition became worse, you know, more evil after their revolt than it was before they revolted. And subhanAllah, are you telling me after the removal of Ali Abdullah Saleh and all the, the and, and, and the fitna, uh, of course it came from the Shia Houthis anyhow, but do you think that this has done any good for Ahl Sunnah and, and any good for the Muslims in Yemen? Cholera, starvation, Poverty, folk of poverty. Yemen has always been a poor country ever since I've known it, ever since I've entered prior to me coming there. Fola. And this is the result. Qaddafi. Okay, whatever your statements about Qaddafi. He had stability though, even with his oppression. Saddam was saying stability with oppression. But when these tyrants were removed, what happened? It opened the door for some of the most wickedest of creation, like ISIS and, and other, and Al-Qaeda to flourish. A security nightmare, a vacuum for them to fill and just overrun and have autonomy in different places. 
It caused folder, folk of folder. And that's the affirmation of what Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said. Sheikh Zaid commented about this usul. He said uh, in the last portion about this asul, he said the definition of the Quranic. He said uh, that Sheikh uh, Muhammad Ibn al-Habb said, then this principle became such that it was unknown amongst many of those who claim knowledge. So how could it be acted upon? Meaning this usul of not rebelling against the leader. He said, uh, Sheikh Zaid said, then... Uh, uh, Sheikh Rahimullah Ta'ala explained that this principle became unknown amongst the majority of the people and these people who lack knowledge of this principle. I'm referring to obedience to the ruler of the Muslims in goodness. The reason for that was their ignorance about the text of the book and the sunnah or the cause for that was the evil objectives and intentions. So no one leaves this principle except that he clings to a false principle that of the Khawarij, that which the Khawarij have clung to, which is Khuruj. Uh, so the Khawarij are those who revolt with weapons against a Muslim leader, claiming that they desire the Sharia in its entirety to rule, especially in the contemporary context. Actually, all throughout history, that was really the claim of the Khawarij. They believe that the rulers must be completely absolved of major sins, because whoever falls into them from amongst the Muslims has disbelieved according to them. So that's what the Khawarij, they make takfir of the Kaba'ir, you know, for people doing the major sins. If you drink alcohol, you're a kafir. If you have zina, you're a kafir. If you do this, kafir. You lie, kafir. All of these things are major sins and you are a disbeliever according to the Khawarij and some of the other sects. Uh, and they believe that if a person dies upon that, then he will abide in the fire forever. They believe that the people must always and forever be people of correctness and uprightness because they perform takfir uh, upon the one who commits sins and dies upon that. So they revolt against the leaders of the Muslims with the sword and they secede from obedience. So an abundance of bloodshed, killing of innocent people and entanglement of the affairs, meaning fitna and folda, both related to the worldly life and the religion occurs as is well known from the documents of history. Whenever a sect from amongst the people has emerged and traversed the path of the Khawarij, the societies were adversely affected by their actions and were forced to become preoccupied with defending their honors, defending their wealth, and defending their blood. So this is an impending evil and a dangerous action. The Khawarij are folda. And the Prophet وسلم, said, Al Khawarij Kilab and Nal. The Khawarij are the dogs of the hellfire. And subhanAllah, if you meet those hardcore tekfiris, you'll see it's almost like they're drooling from their mouths. They're foaming at the mouths for blood. And they are indeed they resemble dogs. Dogs of the fire. I've had debates with people in the Emirates who would not pray in the Masajid of the Muslims. They said that he this guy said that he didn't pray in any mosques. Okay? He said that the the the, the leaders are disbelievers. He said, then the imams, since they get a salary from the, the, the leader, that they are uh, disbelievers. And the musallin, the regular Muslims that are in there, are hypocrites, and the muaddin as well, because they follow this disbelieving uh, imam. They pray behind him. So they're munafiq. So for that reason, I don't pray in the masjid. This is what this guy said. And I said, you are a shaitan. Or I said, you will follow the steps of the shaitan. And this is when my Arabic was in his beginning stages. And he said to me, you are the shaitan. And I was ready to knock his head off. But my man was there and we went to the masjid. We prayed and this devil went out. <laughs> and who knows what happened to this uh, shaitan. So, listen up here. Then the sheikh said, uh, the example of the revolting against the leaders and weapons and revolting against them with speech is the same. So he said the khuruj can be khuruj bi lisan or khuruj bi sanan. That khuruj with the weapon and khuruj with the tongue. So there's rebel, you know, spreading uh, videos and, and speaking out against the, the leaders to, to make the people hate them in their hearts. This is a type of rebellion. He said, regardless of whether the speech is written or contained within a cassette tape or delivered from the top of the pulpit, so rebellion with speech is a means to rebellion with weapons, and that is clearly misguidance. Whoever, whosoever uh, desires to advise the rulers in their various levels and classes, then let him come in a manner that is legislated by the Sharia. We do not say that we must leave off advising, commanding the good and forbidding the evil. However, we say that it must be done with the methodology of the scholars of the Salaf. They used to strive their utmost in advising the rulers of the Muslims in their various 
levels. Moreover, the Khawarij and their followers do not know this principle. Indeed, this Imam grieved due to their actions in his time. So he said, then this principle became such that it was unknown amongst many of those who claim knowledge. So how could it be acted upon? Meaning the people had gotten distorted. They took the Aqidah and the, the Menhaj of the Khawarij. Then the Sheikh said, I say yes. The one who is ignorant of something is bound to repeat it, and the one who does not possess something cannot give it. So since they were ignorant whilst they claimed knowledge, regardless of whether it was concerning this principle or other than it, from amongst the principles, that it was not possible for them to benefit, nor was it possible for them to benefit the Ummah in any situation from amongst the various situations. He said, firstly, there must be knowledge and it must be taken from its people, the inheritance of the prophets, the inheritors of the prophets and messengers, alayhim salatu wasalam, those who traversed upon the minhaj of the Salaf al-Salih. Uh, secondly, knowledge must be followed by followed up by actions publicly and in private as our early Salaf did so they would perform actions and they would fear for themselves that their actions may perchance contradict their statements or that their public behavior may perchance contradict their private behavior. Yes, they feared that for themselves with a greatest, the greatest of fear. And so then the Sheikh ended there on that third principle. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct is from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect from, from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.